Good morning, and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Gary Lodeholt. Two stories. Some years ago, Soviet Premier Khrushchev was speaking before the Supreme Soviet and was severely critical of the late Premier Stalin. While he was speaking, someone from the audience sent up a note that said, what were you doing when Stalin committed all these atrocities? Khrushchev shouted, who sent up that note? Not one person moved. I'll give him one minute to stand up. Slowly the seconds ticked by, but still no one stepped forward. All right, Khrushchev said finally. I'll tell you what I was doing. I was doing exactly what the writer of this note was doing. Nothing. I was afraid to be counted. The second story comes from ancient Rome. In about the year 400, the great Colosseum was often filled with spectators. Everyone came to view the games, which were made up of watching as prisoners or professional soldiers battled each other or with wild beasts such as lions or wolves. The battles lasted until one or the other was killed. Of all the spectacles, the crowd seemed to thrill in the death of a human being the most. It was on such a day that a Syrian monk named Telemachus stood up in the stands. Telemachus was, dread, was distressed by the utter disregard for human life, and so he leaped into the arena in the midst of the gladiators and cried out, This thing is not right. This thing must stop. The authorities gave the command that this interruption in their pleasure should be done away with, and he was run through with a sword, and Telemachus died. But history records that within a few months of this event, the crowds stopped coming and the Roman combats were ended. All because one man dared to speak out for what he felt was right. Our virtue today is fortitude or courage. And I think those two stories have a common theme. Courage as a virtue means to stand up for what is right. Sometimes that's hard to do. Sometimes it's frightening. I think that's where we often have a mistaken idea. We often think that courageous people aren't frightened. I think they're just as fearful as the rest of us. The difference is that their commitment and conviction is stronger still. Do you see what I'm saying? The secret to courage is not being unafraid. It's being committed to a higher cause. It's being committed to what's right. It's being committed to Christ. And as a Christian, that means sometimes having to do unpopular, frightening things. Sometimes it means refusing to laugh or even smile at a racist joke. Sometimes it means not going along with the crowd. Sometimes it means confronting ourselves and what we've always thought and opening ourselves up to grow in faith. And that's a real challenge. One of my favorite stories tells about the attempts to conquer Mount Everest. George Mallory led an expedition to the mountain in the 1920s. The first attempt failed, and so did the second. Then with a team of the best quality and ability, he made a third attempt. But despite all his careful planning and safety precautions, disaster struck and Mallory and some of his party were killed. When those who did survive returned to England, they held a banquet saluting their lost comrades. As the leader of the survivors acknowledged the crowd's applause, he looked around the room at the portraits of Mallory and the others who had died. Then he turned his back to the crowds and faced a picture of the mountain overlooking the table. With tears streaming down his face, he said, I speak to you, Mount Everest, in the name of all brave men living and those yet unborn. Mount Everest, you defeated us once. You defeated us twice. You defeated us three times. But Mount Everest, we shall someday defeat you because you can't get any bigger. 
and we can. We can get bigger, and that's just what God calls us to do. God gives us the world, and he gives us our faith. And then last, he gives us a challenge. Dare great things for God. Thanks for watching, and remember to let this day belong to God.